Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. I hope you had a night, really wonderful uh, summer break, and I've missed you. Um, Marita, thank you for persisting <laughs> in this in this project. Um, I'm, we're I think we're I'm very grateful to you. I I I, I think we all are. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Great. I want to show there's there's one more. Um, oh, it's <laughs> Oh, good. His name is Zeus. Zeus. And he's now going to run away from me because I picked him up. <laughs> he's staying. He's staying. Oh, is this a, a long time um, friend of yours? He's been with us for a decade, I think, for a decade. And we're crossing wow. fingers. So far, so good. Very nice. Little dogs don't always last very long. No. He's doing well. Good. good. He looks good. Uh, welcome, um, Sally. Uh, thanks for joining us. You can, you can, uh, Ruth, you can unmute yourself, yourselves. And because I really, of course, I, I, I hope you will do more of the talking than I will. Um, thank you. Bill, um, do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, sure, yes. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, Denise is joining us. Great. Good. Yes. Welcome. Um, so, um, I, this is a poem, um, that I've been thinking about, um, are talking about for, for a long time. And I thought, well, it just, let's just do it. Um, um, you know, a little bit about, um, I know Gail actually knew James Tate. They were friends. Um, I don't know, Steve, Steve, Stephen, did you? Did I you... I never met him. No. Yeah. He his reputation uh, and presence changed the University of Iowa in the late sixties, and I certainly felt that change yeah. when I was there in the early 70s or mid 70s. Bill Bill is 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 James Tate Tate known in 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 England in the Yeah, he gets mentioned every now and again. I wouldn't exactly say he has a following. Um no. uh, I was just before the program I was reading an obituary and um uh, which referred to um, Simon Armitage, who's um, the uh, poet over here, who apparently wrote um, a whole volume of poems which uh, are modelled after um, what Ford calls uh, Tate's tall story mode. Yeah. And, um, uh, and so uh, he's probably a little bit better known than I realised on the basis of that obituary reference. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, he was someone who just burst on the poetry scene um when uh when he was very young in his early 20s and um uh the lost pilot is the title poem of his first book and he was a yale younger poet which immediately placed him in a kind of limelight um that he was um he was all that he, he 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 never fell out of in in this country um and he was 23 or 24 when it was published yeah 23 according to um uh according to the poetry foundation in fact he was still a student at iowa yeah uh i forget whether it was the first or second year but I think it was the second year. Yeah. 
it, it, it turned a competitive place into a more competitive place. <laughs> so he must have been the same age as his father was when he died. Well, he when he wrote the poem, he was, and he he said, um, if you go to the Poetry Foundation website. Uh, and look at the biography of of uh, of James Tate. Uh, he is actually quoted as saying that that was um, that was a kind of trigger for writing this poem. That he was about about to 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 pass his, his father's age. Oh. Is that is that a radio? <laughs> uh, I just muted. Uh, okay, so let me let me read the poem. I mean, uh, this this is this is certainly the poem that made me that bowled me over, um, and uh, was my introduction to Tate, and. Um, and it's very different from the kinds of poems that he wrote afterwards. And, um, oh, do you have, is, Gail, do you have, is it, is that the lost pilot that you, that you have? Oh. And I have a picture of him before the lost pilot came out this summer before. Wait, 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 how can I do this? Oh, I'm so glad you're, you, you have that picture, yeah. and that's and that's and that's Tate. Elsa Dorfman. Elsa Dorfman is the photographer, and Gail is the other figure with the umbrella, uh, talking to talking to 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 Tate. Yes, I, he, I love he, that picture. Me too, but he came here for the summer, and you know immediately went for the Grolier. And which is where 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 I met him, and he's he was so seemed so fully formed as a poet then. But as you say, his the few the subsequent work wasn't anything like um, the incredible poignancy and sincerity of the Lost Pilot. Yeah, um, uh, for anyone who 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 doesn't live in Cambridge or who may not know, the Grolier is the poetry bookshop in 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 harvard square and it's it's still going uh after 27 it was founded 1927 founded in 1927 yeah um anyway thank you for for showing us that picture I, 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 it's just it's my pleasure magical picture and let me read the poem and we can we can um Talk about it. The Lost Pilot. For my father, 1922 to 1944. Your face did not rot like the others. The co-pilot, for example. I saw him yesterday. His face is corn mush. His wife and daughter the poor, ignorant people stare as if he will compose soon. He was more wronged than Job. But your face did not rot like the others. It grew dark and hard like ebony. The features progressed in their distinction. If I could cajole you to come back for an evening, down from your compulsive orbiting. I would touch you, read your face as Dallas, your hoodlum gunner, now with the blistered eyes, reads his braille editions. I would touch your face as a disinterested scholar touches an original page. However frightening, I would discover you and I would not turn you in. I would not make your face 
I would not make you face your wife or Dallas or the co-pilot, Jim. You could return to your crazy orbiting and I would not try to fully understand what it means to you. All I know is this, when I see you, as I have seen you at least once every year of my life, spin across the wilds of the sky like a tiny African god, I feel dead. I feel as if I were the residue of a stranger's life, that I should pursue you. My head cocked toward the sky, I cannot get off the ground, and you passing over again, fast, perfect, and unwilling to tell me that you are doing well, or that it was mistake that placed you in that world and me in this, or that misfortune placed these worlds in us. Um, well, what's so, what's so good about this poem? Denise. It feels emotionally true. Yeah. Yeah. Can you sort of talk about that a, 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 a little more and sort of what? about what what em emotions are true emotions are 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 happening in the poem um a sense of deep loss but also of wonder um a sense of almost attachment mm -hmm. a sense of uh nostalgia and longing for what was what he barely knew or felt in in life yeah um thank you i i i i don't i don't mean to i don't mean to be pushing you but i i i i i, I agree with all of those qualities that you that you mentioned What do you think of the first I, line? Oh, I'm sorry. I would have added anger and resentment, which I think is what hmm. colors it for me. He's, he's, not, he's not happy with his father. Mm -hmm. and I, I, Go ahead. Well, one of the things that I love about it, that I love about some of the best poems, is that on first reading, at least I am totally involved. It's and but there's an invitation sign. Go back, reread, and see the complexities that are stitched into this incredibly direct, emotional, uh, you know, vulnerable poem. Rather than that opposite method, which is figure me out first then be moved, you know? Uh, and that's one of the things I adore about this poem. It's it's so elemental in emotion, but also if you start paying attention to how it spins itself out, it's astonishing. Yeah. One of the things that amazes me about it is he was a boy when he wrote this poem. I mean, I think we would all agree that at 22, he was a boy, but he's father to his father in this poem. Do hmm. you know what I mean? He's he's reassur he's kind of reassuring the father in some way, and and sort of it it's in so much control mature control as a poet that um and and as you said, Lloyd, that this isn't like his subsequent work. Yeah. Can no, you describe that? 
subsequent subsequent work he was the... kind of an american surrealist and yeah. and that and it could be really silly and a kind of comedian yeah yeah comedian and this is poignant but in control i mean you know you think it's heartbreaking for a 22 year old the age his father was when he died you know yeah. to be to be writing this poem but but he's in so much control of this poem it's just awesome yeah i mean it I, it it knocked me over when i heard it before the book came out you mm. know when he was when he was here meandering around cambridge for the summer yeah and um uh, picking it up after not having looked at it for several years, mm. I was just more impressed than I was when I was 25, you know. I was just thought, uh, this this is such a moving poem, and it's he's got so much control over it. Stanza after stanza. Mm. It's not, you know, it, it's and it's and he has taken the position of father to his father in a way, you know, so that the voice is sort of understanding and forgiving and compassionate to his father. And he's, he, it almost seems as if he's reassuring him that because now he's passing over me fast, perfect, and unwilling to tell me that you are doing well or yeah. that it was a mistake that placed us in these worlds. You know, it, it's um, reading it now, several years after Tate died, you're relatively young, yeah. in his 60s. Um, it seems to me more moving than it even seemed to me then when it actually knocked me out. I mean, I think... I think it had it was an enormous trigger for me to write. Wow. Yeah. I wanna I wanna talk about, oh oh hi, yes. Oh yes, hi. Um I'm um I'm his contemporary. I was born in forty two. And what amazes me about the poem is I I had several I had one really amazing it, encounter with Tate in the Temple Bar bookstore in 1970, 71, 72. Hi, can I ask you really quickly? It sounds like there's a radio in your room and I want to be able to hear what you have to say. I, I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm actually, I, I retired to a corner. I had come to the bar. It's I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll put my ideas into a note and get it to everybody at some point. No, no, no. Keep but, speaking. I'd like to hear what you have to say. But, yeah. but what 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 strikes me is that when I first read, I, I bought his book, and it made no sense to me at twenty two at when <laughs> made no sense to me in nineteen seventy, didn't. And I'm reading it now, and he had. He had an understanding of life and death and whatever else that I've had to get to 80 to have. <laughs> that's what's that's what's been phenomenal. That's what's phenomenal about your your in forcing me to be reintroduce myself to this poem. So I thank good. you. Good, good. Um, I I I want to talk about the title. But I think maybe after we get through the discussion of the poem, uh, uh, I think it's a deceptively simple title and and that becomes a kind of more resonant um, once you read the entire poem. And I and I also just to point out that that dedication i think this is sort of what this is what stephen one of the things that stephen was talking about the kind of directness in the poem is or begins in the in the epigraph yeah for my father 
right. and then those dates. No, you know, you, you, there are no distracting questions in this ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say just one thing about the, the other Tate that we've been talking about. Um, the, you know, the, the court jester Tate. Mm -hmm. I think that there are little glimmers of that Tate in this ball, mainly in corn mush. And just that phrase and the, and the line break. So he's not absent from this poem, nor is the really poignant mm. Tate absent from the best of his other poems. Mm. You know, uh, there are there are glimmers of that poignancy in the poems of his that I go back to in addition to this one. And I just it's an interesting. It's an interesting dynamic that I'm not sure I can think of in in any other poet that this poem is such a signature poem for him and uncharacteristic and yet something that's characteristic about it deepens most of his other poems that i think are the strongest ones right one that gail published called paint to you think i think i think you published that in, in plowshares i did i think so it ends with my little plot of earth uh i think okay paint to you think? I think. anyway you have a better memory than I do. I mean, I think one of my favorite titles of his is The Blue Booby. Oh, yeah. And and it's a wonderful poem. And it's... it's Right. It's actually very poignant. And it, it, it's it's like a, fa a fable. It, it, yeah, I mean, the, 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 that's not missing from his other work, The what we're noticing. But let's um, let's let's get back to the first line. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going on mute. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 please. Uh, it's an astonishing first line, isn't it? Yes. Your face did not rot, and just even the sound of it is i don't know what what do you what do you make of that of that first line of the, of even of the rhyme in at the end of the line well it's a it it it's a it seems to me it's kind of a horrifying thing to say about your father and we don't we we don't know the story yet i mean it's you know it, there is a narrative here and we know something about it must be the lost pilot it must be his father and you must be the also must be the father your face did not rot. It, it's just so. It seems to me so bald. And not and rot is such a. Not rot. It's such a rocky line. Yeah, it's really. Um, there's something kind of repellent about it, even. Did but it's not, so, he just jumped right in. Yeah. Too did not rot like the others, the co-pilot, which is a kind of rhyme. Rot. Certainly yeah. a visual rhyme with rot. Rot and pilot. Did not rot like the others, the co-pilot, for example. What about that? What do you make of that? The tonal movement of those first three lines. Well, if I may, there are a couple of things I noticed. The first one is we don't yet know that not rotting is actually worse than rotting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your face is not rotting. So, oh, that's nice. I'm glad of that. But then we find out later that it's because he never came down. Right. 
you know, and I'm interested whether readers of this poem find, I was talking with Hillary about it this morning, um, the co-pilot, Dallas, Jim, they're, they are part of the imagined real world. We are to assume they did survive, right? Mm -hmm. I, I assume that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is which raises all sorts of unanswered questions about what exactly happened. You know, they they bailed out and he couldn't. He was the pilot, I guess. But I just it, I've always wanted to hear someone else say, "Yes, that's the way to read it." Um, but hey, the the but the father also kept a sort of perfection in the in the son's mind. Where oh yeah. The, the co-pilot was kind of a horror, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. His face it, it, brought it. Yeah, Ab yeah. Absence, absence has no scars. The co-pilot, for example, I, 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 that, that kind of casual conversational um Inter interjection is which is not not absolutely necessary and then in retrospect becomes extremely necessary because these are all examples of 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 um they're all examples of the the sort of the horrors of survival. Mm -hmm. The co-pilot, for example, I saw him, I saw him yesterday. So here, here he is on earth. His face is corn mush and i guess i i mean it that's a very startling it's a very startling image and i and i suppose you're right about the kind of comedic element yeah. I, although i have to say i've always found it one of the most horrifying moments in the poem Oh, I think it's both, but it, but the the tone is incongruous, right? Which is what makes it so powerful, uh, right? One could hear it as an insult, but it's right. not. It's it's it is utterly repellent. But just the Horrifying. words themselves are fun. Corn is a funny word, you know. Right. His face is oh, corn and mush. Yeah, his wife and daughter, the poor ignorant oh. people. What 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 do you make about ignorant? Because I think Kate is sort of oh. separated from separate from them because they don't understand, and he understands. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to make of it, and he is elucidating what he's making out of it. Yeah, yeah. Bill, you did. Were you going to say something, Bill Symes? Oh. oh. I thought you yeah it, yeah it was actually sort of relating to the earlier part rather than this so i can come round to this so it, it's it, um, i think what an interesting feature of the discussion so far is that when you called upon people initially to say what they thought of the poem they reached for um uh an affective language i think gail's first word was sincerity i think denise spoke about emotional truthfulness but then Quickly, Gail segued into talking about control, and um, I, I think that that sort of switch from uh, uh, one term to another, with terms which seem quite um, disparate, um, uh, reminded me of um, an essay by Donald oh. Davy called, um, I think it's called Poetry and Sincerity, in which he um, spoke about the need to rehabilitate the concept of sincerity in order to do justice to confessional poets like Lowell, but um, didn't want to abandon the new critical tradition, which involves obviously precise analysis of artifice. And effectively, he 
conflates the terms. He sees sincerity in that essay as um, a construct, as something which is um, reducible to um, uh, 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 the control uh, and restraint exhibited as a result of artifice. And I think this poem does come across as enormously sincere, but as soon as one begins to talk about it, one realizes that the sincerity is the product of a, a very controlled, um, to borrow Gale's term, uh, manipulation of tone. Uh, so in, in the first stanza, there's that, that, you know, that it's the starkness of those monosyllables in the first line um, right. um, effectively becomes a kind of rhetoric of authenticity. There's a sort of no nonsense quality about it, which as it were is almost angled to hook the the flaws we we of sincerity. And then in the in the, the sentence you went on to, the co-pilot, for example, saw him yesterday, the 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 um uh, uh, restart or nominativus pendens, you know, beginning with the object and then coming round to the subject in a conversational way, sort of not I saw the co-pilot yesterday, but the co-pilot, I saw him. So the syntax too, sort of in being faintly maladroit in a conversational manner, contributes to the rhetoric which um, manufactures the impression uh, of sincerity. Um, uh, uh, those were the thoughts that I was having. And, 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 and then there are sort of fussily fastidious effects, aren't they? This, uh, I, I'm not sure if we've quite got there, stare as if he will compose soon. Um, yeah. Compose yeah. is used in a strange sense, almost as an opposite of decompose. And yet it doesn't That's really possess true. that meaning yeah. in yeah. Um, conversational yeah. usage. So, uh, um, well, so it sounds well, yeah. kind of normal, but faintly quirky. And uh, but also contributes to the overall impression we have of um, of um, this infinite control over the language, calculated to um, imply uh, or evince the impression of sincerity. I, I, I don't know if that's yeah. Um, <laughs> Doesn't the phrase uh, "the poor his wife and daughter the poor ignorant people." That's such a distancing phrase, poor ignorant people. That's like the Statue of Liberty. Give me your hungry, your tired. <laughs> um, it's not something you would say about. I mean, it begins with face, the most intimate encounter with a person, and wife and daughter is going. And that phrase just um, discombobulated me as a reader. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it seemed cruel. Yes. Contemptuous. Yeah. Yeah, contemptuous, insulting. Those the poor, ignorant people stare. And then, and then I think in the next line, kind of that you see why. Bill, yeah. Did you have your? Oh no, sorry. Oh no. <laughs> no, you. I I meant you. Oh um no 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 I, no, I didn't no, want to okay I, yeah right. it it's just your your smoking hand <laughs> yes <laughs> um but but I think the 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 shift from the poor ignorant people which which I totally agree with you is so contemptuous <clears throat> is so um, condescending stare as if he will compose soon and I. I, I I agree with Bill that compose is just is such um is a very loaded word in a, in a in a poem in a in a composition and compose it's also it also sounds musical and the the whole idea that this this face that has turned into corn mush that that these the ignorance is that they believe that somehow he will get better that he will change that his image will will change and then the in a way the the rest of the poem is about how Tate's image of his father 
has kind of composed in his own mind without any tangible evidence. It's just everything is just what's in his imagination. Uh, decomposition, which we think of as the fate of the dead, right. becomes the fate of the living. Exactly. Um, um, exactly. Is it, um, a poem which is very famous in England because it's read out at um, ceremonies, uh, armistice ceremonies, is um, Lawrence Binion's For the Fallen. Is that a poem which an American would have been aware of? They shall not grow old as we that remain grow old. Um, because it, it seems as if this was a, a kind of clasping of the same consolation um, that the, the, the dead do not rot, they do not grow old and weary in the way that the, those who live on do, but um, uh, involving a transposition of that sentiment into a new and more demotic key, which um, rings true and seems... Uh, all the more sincere for not being pitched too high. Right, right. Um, I remember reading that poem decades and decades ago, but I think it's it's it, it's kind of lost to uh, to us here. Uh, well, we we get a yearly reminder of it right. in England. Uh, right. But... right. Stare stare as if he will compose soon he was more wronged than job but your face did not rot so then it all comes it all comes round from that opening line after the experience of the person this horrifying person, horrifying looking person who has survived. And then back to, um, back to, uh, to Tate's father. But you, well, were, I, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Ruth, I think is, was wanted to add something. Please. Sorry. Oh, it was, it was me. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, there you are. I, I, I'm getting the sense that uh, the idea is that his father uh, did not survive, but the other crew members did. Um, <clears throat> and I was wondering why that was, and if in fact there was some sort of choice, and what the poet's reaction would have been to that. Any ideas? From wow. You know more than I do. Yeah. I, uh, I, I can, the pilot would have been responsible for keeping the plane as much as possible on the straight and level until all of his crew was out of the aircraft, at which point it might have been too late. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. It's a very useful thing to bring to the poem. Yeah. That the poem doesn't explicitly state but it's right. that, that to me enriches my own rereading of the poem the choice that the pilot made um i assume he knew his wife was pregnant um she would actually you know uh, no i think he was he was born i think he was actually a few oh, yeah. months old. Okay, that's even worse. Yeah, mm -hmm. that 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 he was he was a few months old when his when his father was killed. But he was born too late uh, to him. get his father out of the draft. Uh, it, he he would have had to be born before December eighth, nineteen forty one, uh, and he was born in forty. Uh, 43, I think. Lloyd? He was oh, yeah. probably conceived, he was probably conceived before his father completed his flight training. That is, his, it was probably, very possibly conceived as at a last minute, I'm going off, you know, I've been in, I'm headed off to war, dear, let's make a baby. 
I mean, that may be have been part of the the necessary structure of his parents' life. And also the protocol would have been that the pilot would have would have con controlled the airplane. That would that would have been just assumed that that's what he would do. That was the responsibility of being in the left seat. Yeah. More important than the responsibility of the father. Yes. Well, well the pilot is in the left seat. Right. The, that's the, yeah. Right, but 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 yes, in 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 terms of priorities, the son might have had some feelings about that. Uh, he might have. And I think we've got a couple questions. So Stephen and William, thank you. I I just am interested in people's responses to the line. He was more wrong than Job. Uh, I'm I'm I mean I have my own, but. I'm interested in what other people, because it, it does seem, I mean, I'll just say this, it is a line that's self-contained syntactically. As far as I know, it's the only biblical reference in the poem, but I might be hmm. corrected on that. Um, I just am really interested in what people, how people stitch that into this portrait of a man whose face is corn mush. I mean, that maybe answers the question. <laughs> yeah. But any 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 thoughts? Bill? Bill? Recover. About the perfection in the poet's mind of his father. You know, that his father was not marred or disfigured. And so he still has this place in his son's mind as this sort of, you know, perfect, perfect young man. Yeah. The he refers, though, the he refers to the co-pilot, right? To the not co-pilot. Yeah. 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 I just, the word wronged seems to me interesting. I mean, and of course, that'll come back later when we look at words like mistake and misfortune. Right. But I just, you know, it's to be more wrong than Job is to kind of be on God's bad side or, you know, I mean, there are all sorts of ways of looking at that. And I just was curious how people. Mm. And, and how the Bill, 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 what was your, what was, you I'm have, sorry. you have your, your, you have your hand up, which. I have my cartoon hand. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the poem seems to me to turn a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, turn a lot on the question of whether the father has made a choice or had rotten bad luck. Um, and, you know, partly, as Clyde says, <clears throat> the father would have made a choice to stay in the plane so that all the others could get out. It was, uh, but it was a, a required choice. The father... James Tate was born too late to serve as an exemption, uh, as a draft deferment mm -hmm. for his father. The, uh, the, the draft board took account of the fact that people might have a perverse incentive to procreate. And so they set a date for when children cease to be a, uh, an exemption. Mm -hmm. His father probably had a choice to be a pilot whether that's more or less dangerous, I don't know. But it's that sort of instability. Had he chosen or was he compelled that seems to run through it to the last lines when um, the poet seems to uh, accept that uh, fate has dealt a very bad hand to both of them. Yeah. And it, it's also possible that his father enlisted and the enlistment sergeant looked at the list of what he needed. And he was his father was just assigned by the enlisting sergeant to the Air Corps. That there's any number of there were 19 year old pilots 
who went from tractors to the left seat because the enlistment sergeant said they need you in the Air Corps. So we don't know that his father was drafted. It's quite possible that his father enlisted. Yes. I, I know, I, I remember knowing that my father, who had three children, tried to enlist. I mean, I think as a young Jewish man, you know, that it, there was probably a, a, a sort of urgency and, and he wasn't taken because of the children. They didn't consider him. Hmm. Any, any, any other thoughts about the, the Steve's question about the, the line yeah. about Job? Yeah. I mean, I, I, th I don't know if this is what Stephen had in mind, but um, the, the oddness of the line seems to me to derive from the fact that um, the, experience on account of which he is presented as being more wrong than Job is the utterly commonplace one of growing old and wrinkled and losing your looks and acquiring a face like corn marsh. So there's a kind of disjunction between the, the attribution of a fate worse than Job's um, uh, and the ordinariness of the experience um, which underpins it. I, th I think that's the source of the strangeness of the line for me. I, what, um, can I ask Stephen? Uh, Stephen began by saying he had his own ideas about the line. Can can we? Can you disclose? Sure. Them? Well, uh, in terms of its content, yeah, I, I I think it's a the parallel to Job is in the utter undeserving quality of the of the um, uh, of what happens to these people, and in a way doesn't happen to the father because the father is left suspended. The other one for me is tonal. This poem is an incredible, I mean, we've just had corn mush. We've had poor ignorant people that we spent a lot of time on. And then he was more wrong than Job. I can hear that like starting an Anthony Hecht poem or something. I mean, it's, mm. it's just the, the tone of it is so sober. And, you know, this is, this is not a, court gesture of James Tate poem, but it is fairly confidential and intimate. And that line has a certain, I don't know what the right word is, a certain sobriety to it that I just think adds to the range of emotions. Uh, I, he's surrounded by poor, ignorant people so that he's got like nobody, to, he's got nobody to debate his wrongs with while job is surrounded by is surrounded by philosophers and people that he's trying to say you know why is this happening to me so and this poor guy's ignorant. got nobody to talk about his nobody's got he's got nobody to talk to about what's happened to him but wouldn't you say that job's comforters are equally ignorant i i i, I you know <laughs> But at least they're in conversation with him. Yeah. <laughs> and Denise, I know you had your hand up as well. Well, um, I have, although most of the points I was going to address have passed. Although, you know, one of them, my, my reaction to the ambiguity of motive could explain the, I won't make you face your wife. Um, reference because she might have those questions, um, you know, becoming a probably young widow with a small child. Um, what were some of the, I, I was struck in the whole beginning of the poem by the, the short monosyllables that sort of pound in. Um, yeah a meaning, a tone, and then it goes off into for example, which is a complete break with that rhythm. Um, and, you know, I, I don't take the poor ignorant people remark to be um, so much pejorative, especially in connection with the Job line, because they could well be hoping for a miracle, which we know will not happen even with, you know, lots of plastic surgery because 
because it it can't whereas for job it did you know he was not only restored but you know blessed beyond his prior state um so i that's some of what was on my mind yeah and to add to that in the chat uh hume wrote is there an implication that corn mush relates to a disfiguring injury in the air disaster and that this itself is worse than Job's loss of a family and home. That wasn't me. That was Hume. No, yeah, that was Hume. I was just adding that as we continued no, this conversation. No, Hume, I, I, that's how I've taken it. <laughs> that's how I've taken it. Just like the blister dies. Yes, they are. They are the yeah. result of, of the. It's not it's not just the result of aging. Yeah. But but of some of some wound of some injury. Yeah, that's. One, one of the things this. Going over it like this just reminded me is that. The speaker. Is a child whose father to his father in this poem, you know, and he's sort of pre present, he's sort of kind of reassuring his father and telling him what, you know, where, where he is, where he, the speaker is now. And he has had to be, you know, and I feel like behind it is he had to be partner to his mother, you know, that he and his mother was as a, as an infant he and his mother became alone together in the world and that he's writing this letter to his father which in some ways is saying it you know that it's 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 been difficult but that uh, he's a man and he can handle it and he's sort of he's he's father to the father to me in this poem yeah well, he's just he's just become a little older than his father right. was. Right. But your face uh, let, let's let's continue. Your face did not rot like the like the others. It grew dark and hard like eb like ebony. The features progressed in their distinction. I, th th this seems to me to, to to connect to the compose earlier that the, that the father has become because he's n n he's never returned in 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 Tate's imagination he's become a work of art. Mm -hmm. Um, grew dark and hard like ebony. The feature, and I'm thinking of of the you know the. Where where is the line about the um the African god? Mm -hmm. Um uh the features progressed in their distinction rather than in their erasure, in their um disintegration. If I could cajole you to come back, and I Catherine. I, I, yeah, I saw yeah, where it stopped me. <laughs> I, yeah, and that that's just uh, that seems like a just such a wonderful moment in 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 the poem. If I could cajole you to come back for an evening down from your compulsive orbiting, the tonal shifts are just uh, the the kind of breathtaking, and it's <laughs> happening all the way through the through the poem. Cajole just stopped me in my tracks. Persuade would have fit in the meter, okay, you know, if I could persuade you to come back. But yeah. cajole has seducing in it and exactly. winning. Exactly. So it, it packs so much about a child's fantasies about a dead parent. Yeah. And to go back to something that Jonathan said at the very beginning about the about the anger. Um your compulsive orbiting, it's as if that's his father's choice. 
that he has that he has made some decision not to come back and just to keep in in what the child's mind is this sort of you know it's he's become a kind of satellite um rather than i mean we don't hear anything about a a plane crash oh Ruth, yeah yeah well i didn't mean to interrupt you lloyd please I, no i want you to interrupt but this that part in the poem kept reminding me of of stanley kunitz's poem about haley's comet which ah. Um, which I grabbed off the shelf here, but it's, you know, he the poem describes how they hear about the comet in school that day. He's a, he's in grade school, and then he got, sneaks up to the roof of his house at night to look out at the sky, and he imagines, I mean, it's like his father is the Halley's comet whizzing by, because he says, look for me, father, on the roof of the red brick building. He's his father committed suicide when he was very small. I don't remember when, or right. perhaps before he was born. Before he was born. Yeah, before he was born. And <clears throat> and it was not something that was discussed in that family. But but somehow this just struck me as, as another example of a dead father kind of up there in the stratosphere and the child trying to connect to that, to that orbiting father. Yeah, and, and Peter, I think it also wanted to add something. Oh, uh, yes, I'm confused by the references to orbiting, because orbital flight, space flight, wasn't achieved till 1962. So, what are we doing here in the 1940s with the father apparently orbiting Earth uh, in perpetuity? Well, of course, the poem is it was written in in what six in the sixties. Hmm. So uh, I think or, orbiting is 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 very much in in his mind, but it but it's also just the fantasy. I mean, for me, it's it's just the fantasy that. The father is just up there. That that, that 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 there's no there's no there's no crash. There's no uh there's no there's no body uh left over. It's it's just everything is 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 left to to his own imagination. So um, I I'm sorry? In perpetuity. In perpetuity, yeah. Yeah. Denise, go ahead. Oh, Denise. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, his father's become a god or godlike, and yeah. celestial bodies orbit. Right. 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 Oh, and one more, Stephen. And I'm sorry to keep. Yeah, this is very quick. Well, I thank you. I'm, 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 I'm out of practice. <laughs> right. Um, I'd never thought of this before, and maybe I think it was something Gail said. There's an odd way in which the speaker reminds me of the child who says, why is dad away at work so much? Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you know, it, your compulsive orbiting, I guess it's the word compulsive. And I, you know, I, I don't think that's conscious, but I'm just having this sense that in some ways, the boy is talking to the father and saying, you know, could we have some time together? Uh, and it, it, it just has increased the poignancy of the poem just by thinking of it that way. Later on, he says crazy orbiting. Right, right. right. Well, you know, he's yeah. father's a workaholic. <laughs> uh, yeah. John. Yeah, also, don't forget that this is the speaker's attempt to keep his father alive, even though he's distant and he's out there. But the fact that he acknowledges him out there, it's keeping him alive, which is of great, has to be of great comfort to the speaker. Right. Alive, but out of, but always out of reach. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. And, and in that, especially in that compulsive, he, 
he's really <clears throat> blaming his father. It seems to be a kind of choice or or necessity on the part of the father to just stay out there orbiting. I would touch you. And here's the fantasy of if I could cajole you to come back. So there is this, 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 well, it's more complicated than just affection, but affection, I think, is part of it. I would touch you, read your face as Dallas, your hoodlum gunner, I, which I think is just, I mean, it's sort of gratuitous, but it's just wonderful. Uh, I mean, and the name, the name Dallas and Hoodlum, and we really don't know anything else about the 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 gunner, except the, you know those those two things, and that tells us a lot. We, I mean, we could imagine the movie, uh, in which uh, you know, I don't know William Bendix or you know someone like that is 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 the is 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 the gunner on the on the on the plane so the dallas um, is a reader i'm sorry we also know that dallas is a reader so we do so we find out with your hoodlum gunner now with the blistered eyes reads his braille editions exactly the hoodlum is a reader Yep. So this, this little boy took in all the information that his mother had about the crew. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right. Sure. You, you sort of ask, how does the kid know that the that Dallas was was a hoodlum? And there that's that's how they would he certainly wouldn't know it from the father. Right. It's right. a beautiful moment of uh, in indirect insertion of information, I, I'd also just uh, say any serious writing student who wants to think about syntax and how syntax and expression work should study from if I can Joel down to Braille editions over and over and over again. It the number of false start of false stops in that sentence, mm -hmm. you know, and then it goes on. Um, it's it's just, it, it, we haven't, you know, talked that much about craft, but but this poem is structure, is built, the enjambments, the pauses, the syntax is, is just astonishing. Yeah. 23, 22, whatever. I mean, he well, sort of, he, he made the enjambment the mode for so many poets after him. Not that people didn't do it, but people said, oh, you can do that? You know? Right. Well, yeah, the enjambment the moment with corn mush was remarkable, wasn't it? Stopping yes. at corn. So that at the line ending, it seems like a rather elegant, traditional image, you know, people being cut down like corn, but as as soon as you go over the, the line ending, it becomes much more irreverent and um, and uh, ghastly. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, on, on, the, on the subject of Hoodlum implying that he uh, has quizzed his mother about um, his father's colleagues as mm -hmm. a way of getting close to um, the father, or as close as he can get, given that he's... Um, uh, out of reach. Um, isn't it also the case that there's a kind of implication that he has somehow kept up with these um, friends of his father? The fact that he knows about um, Dallas's failing sight, unless he was blinded in the original um, crash or something. Well, the in at the end of the first stanza, I saw him yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yes, quite, yes. So, so he's he sees he, it's, it's almost as if the the um, unusual effort to keep up with these people yeah. has been some uh, tragically unavailing attempt to 
get to the father. Yes. Yes. And that, I, I, I love this this part because the, the what comes after the 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 Braille editions. So, I I would I would touch you, read your face. I would touch your face. So I would touch you, read your face, and now I would touch your face. As a disinterested scholar touches an original page and that's 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 i mean there's certainly there's there's some affection in this but now it's it's different from affection it's really there's i mean it's curiosity oh. but but oh selena my goodness hello um uh, it's something other than just affection. It's really kind of investigation, curiosity. Um, so many. I I I I I love that as a disinterested scholar. I I was uh, curious about disinterested because a scholar touching an original page is not disinterested. It's such an exciting. <laughs> it's a thrilling moment. It's a moment of love and kind of completion and. Uh, I I thought that the word that it's as well uh, disinterested what we call uh, denial of you know denial of how invested he is in touching that you know like a child's disclaimer disinterested and uninterested are are different yes yes do so you think a, I was mistaking sense of these trying to show how um how his ego isn't invested in this he wouldn't be invested in this that he yes. would just be scholarly scientific I, yes. almost. I would uh, I was saying um it was disinterested that I was contrasting his actual state with not right. not uninterested right but I but I also think that um the scientist or the scholar who may be so invested and thrilled is also supposed to be disinterested <laughs> is supposed to be objective and that that i think that's what what tate is is mm -hmm. is is is, is, is it, I, as a disinterested and oh. yeah I'm sorry, Denise, did you want to just add to that? Yes, please. Oh, please. I was thinking it's sort of uh, worshipful. This is a holy relic and being in its presence sort of suspends the ego mm -hmm. yeah. for a direct encounter. Yeah. However frightening, I would discover you. I would discover you. And I would not, and I would not turn you in. And I, I you know, again, uh, it's such, it's such an interesting, surprising thing to say. S S Suzanne, I, I, I think you were responding to this in a kind of similar way that, that, that I was. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's totally surprising. Um, however, frightening. I would discover you, but I would not turn you in. And then we hear uh, whom he would protect the father from, possibly. And what's what is the um, danger there? What's what what is he protecting his father from? Right, right, right. And Lloyd, we've got a couple more. Stephen and uh, thank you. Keep, yeah. Keep, yeah I, I, just brief. I just wanted to comment on the disinterested. How it's part of this advance and retreat quality to the intimacy. There, the digressions. The poem pulls away from the father to notice the father's co-pilot and you know other. It's it's as much 
And it really, I think the pivot is when he says, I feel dead, which we haven't gotten to. Right. There's a place where there, he can no longer uh, look away. Yeah. Uh, uh, I should, I, I have to take my dog out. <laughs> Oh, and before you go, uh, Bill and Jonathan had a, their hand raised as well, and then Clyde. I just wanted to say there, there's, there, there are two other people from that bomber. There's the co-pilot and the gunner. They're not the same people. Right. They both have facial injuries. Right. Um, so when he says, "I would not make you face your wife," in other words, if he if he were able to touch that face. It would cease to be the African god, and it might be something more like the other people in that plane that was disfigured. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's how I read it. I, 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 um, it's, I also am, I mean, I just in this, in this series of astonishments, I am astonished that the co pilot's name is Jim. Um, which of course is the poet's name. Um, you could return to your crazy orbiting. So yeah, it it, it moves from compulsive to to crazy. Um, and I would not try to fully understand what it means to you. Yeah? No, I was just going to say that in these stanzas, the sort of the sense of um, that the speaker would, would protect the father from charges of abandonment. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's, um, I would not turn you in. Yeah. You know, um, so that and and that's all the complexity of 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 this poem of this address. It, it, he's reassuring the father. He's he's making something for himself, and he's telling he's telling us about it. Yeah. With, um, and, with, and, uh, with regard to um, the question of whether the the other occupants of the plane were injured and disfigured in escaping from the crash. And that seems to have been the assumption of quite a lot of people. It was Jonathan's assumption a moment ago. I think it was your, yours as well, Lloyd, in relation to Cornmarsh. And I can see that it's entirely plausible to think in those terms. But the original opposition was between the father's face, which doesn't rot, and the rotting faces of the others. And rot is a slow, progressive degeneration, isn't it? So that there's a tension between the idea that they have incurred injuries instantaneously, which make them uh, horribly disfigured, and the possibility that they have suffered a long decline, which the father has been spared because of his dying of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, um, um, yeah, I think that is th sure. Uh, but that, but that they have these the the, the co-pilot and the gunner have suffered terrible injuries, and one of them is blind is blind, and um, and, and that's the blindness you also impute to the. The, the, the crash is not the blind, a progressive, slow descent into blindness. I do, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I've um, probably might have read it wrongly in that case. I've tended, or, I tended to, or, or in some way. I mean, we don't know about a crash. No, no, that's true. But the 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 pilot and the gunner have exited the plane yes they may have been i mean you know i there may have been parachutes they may have been shot mm -hmm. on their way down or even before they left the plane i mean we just don't know about we don't know their histories no but there there remains the tension with 
they're being subject to rot and uh, decay. Yes. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, so, so uh, yeah, I, mean, I, th I think I think people, I think the general tendency of the group has been to assume that um, uh, they were badly injured. And I th the, the more I think about it, the more I think that's right. In, uh, um, but um, uh, th th there does seem that tension with slow degeneration right. as well. Yeah. Right, right. That has been my assumption, yeah. Uh, uh, you could return to your to, to your crazy orbiting and I would not try to fully understand what it means to you. Um, he's, well, he's being very honest here. Uh, it seems to me that um, the, the, the sincerity that we were talking about er, earlier is this is the, the sort of quandary that he's in and and that he would he's willing to he's he wants to be the scientist the the scholar the disinterested scholar and he's really trying very hard about to 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 do that to be that all i know is this when i see you oh when i have seen you at least once every year of my life spin across the wilds of the sky like a tiny African god. I feel dead. And um, that's another kind of bombshell in the poem. And Stephen was referring to that uh, a couple of minutes ago. And again, the syntax has so much to do with it. The, the, yeah. the way it lands right at the beginning of the stanza and again those those monosyllabic words that are are so crucial in this poem and the, it's the way the poem started and and that they just it it kind of i think you use the word hammered um something like that it really is just hitting you, stabbing you, hammering at you. I feel dead. I feel as if I were the residue of a stranger's life that I should pursue you. Um, and, you know, I think the, 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 the really great part of the poem is still to come. Um, my head cocked toward the sky. I cannot get off the ground. So there's now there's almost a kind of envy. Mm -hmm. I cannot get off the ground and you passing over again, fast, perfect, unwilling to tell me that you are doing well. And then, yeah, again, this just incredibly complicated cross currents of, of feeling of, of, of sadness and anger and frustration and- Longing. And longing, absolutely unwilling to tell me that you are doing well or that it was and i think this is it this is one of the m most astonishing things in the poem and that it was mistake not a mistake that it was mistake as a kind of large sort of category of 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 of, of living a deity yeah yeah or that it was mistake that <clears throat> placed you in that world and me in this in that world and me in this or that misfortune 
also like a kind of deity, a kind of goddess or some kind of large force in the universe or that misfortune. You can go back to Job now or that misfortune placed these worlds in us. And I, I think the poem kind of rises to sort of tragedy to, tr to, I mean, to even kind of, even a kind of cl classical tragedy that this is the nature of being and the nature of their being and that it can never be resolved. And that now that now we have, I know we only have a few minutes left. Um, uh, but now can we go back to the title for, for a moment? How about some sort of ambigu ambiguity in the title? The, the title is the title is I mean uh, the pilot is lost on his mission. Right. He's lost to his son, right. and also a pilot is of all people the one we expect to be in charge. Exactly. Guiding the course of the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the the course of of his life, of the poet's yeah. life, the lost pilot, lost, yeah, lost, he's lost, as you say, and lost to him, and then lost as whatever the pilot you hope will be in your life won't be right the pilot that steers that lands you safely yeah. and that anyway that Some, no, it, it, oh it, sally yes please that it's taken him out of it it's his not his not the responsibility of the pilot anymore anymore and his, so his son doesn't need to feel that he was being left out left on purpose it somehow removes that. Yeah, although I don't know if it removes it entirely. Well, probably not, but it's a poem after all. Yes, right, <laughs> right, right. There's the poem. There's the poem. I, um, I had a distracting question, distracting to me. Okay. If you, you had said at the beginning it was this poem was written in the 1960s. Yes. So it was written after 1963. Dallas inevitably connotes the death of President. Oh, oh my gosh. I've never, I've really never thought of that. Oh, I thought. You know, what? I couldn't hear that. I said the Dallas after 1963 inevitably oh. connotes the death of the president, the lost pilot. Hmm. Wow. But I don't know when in 1960s it was written. That was he, he might have already written this. I'm. I'm saying. Yeah. I, I'm. Yeah. It. It. Well, I, the book came out in '67. Yeah. You have, so we you don't know when the poem was written, as you said. And the and the poem had to have been written before '67. Yeah. Stephen, is, what what what's the copyright date in '67? Yeah. The, but this is this is a paperback as. Yeah, but, yeah. I, it so, doesn't. I'm sure. I'll bet a Google search would. No, no. The book came out. In, the book came out in '67. He right. was a 1967 Yale younger poet. Right. We don't. We don't know when he wrote the poem. No. I bet we, we can find it out. We we started off by saying that he wrote it as he became as old as his father. Right. Yes, right. He would have been as old as his father in 1965. Okay, my my arithmetic isn't so good. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, I, I have one question about the ending that... Yeah. Um, isn't, is it the case that, uh, that the grammar 
my head cocked toward the sky. I cannot get off the ground. Okay, I cannot get off. There's the, you know, the core sentence. And you passing over again fast raises the expectation that you something cannot get off or you do and there's no active verb that relates to the you unless you say i cannot get off the ground and i cannot get off you but that that yeah. seems like a strain yeah no i so I, this I, I the syntax that. and grammar leaves the you suspended with without an active verb yeah um to, I, a, I, to attach to which is just again breathtaking yeah i think that i i think the, the that the that the grammar of of those last two stanzas are really very unsettling yes and uh and 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 there is i agree with you that there's a kind of suspension that and you sort of have to figure out well where yeah that i mean how many times have i reread those those last stanzas to you know to to parse to parse them you, I, I think they are ultimately not parsable, parsable. <laughs> in a conventional sense yeah and that's yeah. what that's yeah. part, part of the genius of it you you are you are left suspended yeah syntactically grammatically five that's <laughs> yeah yeah, right. I'm getting yeah. that through a workshop. <laughs> yeah, right. Unwilling to tell me that it was a mistake that placed you in that world and me in this, or that misfortune. So it was unwilling to tell me that misfortune placed these worlds in us. Oh, it, it, I mean, you you find yourself substituting extra that's to make a conventional grammar and syntax, which of course destroys the effect of the lines. Yeah, yeah. But it is, it John. Yes, please. Yeah, can I make a comment that I think to another tape poem that I think comments back on this poem, yeah. and in the second book, I don't know the name of the poem. But when I read these lines, I mean, I just memorized them immediately for the past you know, 50 years. I've been repeating them to myself. <laughs> a man wrestles with his demons in a hotel room all night. What the hell? Make it a lifetime. Which in some ways I think could be a comment uh, that, that Tate might be writing about himself. At a very early age, he knows the predicament that we are all in, that he's in. And you know, this is this is the human condition. This is it. This yeah. is all we have. And this is sort of the big step I think he takes toward being the court jester. I mean, the sense of black humor in those these lines is just so enormous. But it's also compassionate, strangely. Yeah. He did write about this event in another genre. He wrote a, a memoir piece that was published in, I believe, the North American Review. Um, and I've read it years and years ago, and I've never sort of tried to search it out again, but it's, it's about this, about losing his father. Hmm. Hmm. The only image I remember is that he's at camp at one point and somebody is putting like a, a scorpion or some kind of poisonous animal at the bottom of his bed, like, you know, kind of aggressive short sheeting. <laughs> Uh, but it's a beautiful piece of writing. I, I, I haven't looked for it. But. Hmm. Does, does anyone know whether um, the details like Dallas and Jim are invented? Because obviously um, Catherine's uh, suggestion of an evocation of um, Kennedy would be the more forceful if he'd actually manufactured those details or whether they just happened to as it were, play into his hands, uh, whether historical accuracy could yeah. deliver the um, analogy. Yeah, I, I just, I just believe him. Okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, no, no, you believe the poem. And I believe the poem. Yeah. 
I do. Thank you. Hell, he believes him. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you so much. It's really great to see you all. Thank you for your really illuminating comments and and um and um as always uh I I I I I learned so much from you about these poems that I thought I knew inside out. And uh thank you so much Marita, thank you so much. I know you have to go. Um but um um great to see you and we're very very grateful to you for continuing this and thank you thank you all. thank so you thank and you. me too and thank you lloyd this was beautiful and uh see you guys all next month oh we have a date we don't we have do. a yet. When, when is it it's September. october 14th yes I'm, yes no you thank haven't you. chosen a poem yet not no i haven't <laughs> that that that's usually the last thing keep us in suspense yes yeah well i i hope it will be something that you uh you will find of interest yeah um, absolutely and um i hope to see you then